Hey, my name is Angela. I'm a holistic registered dietitian, nutritionist, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I want to talk to you about our new research article that has come out and it's titled the long-term effects of diet and how it relates to pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory effects on the gut microbiome, which is basically all the bacteria, the fungi, the microorganisms that live in our digestive tract. And in this study, they looked at people who had ulcerative colitis, they looked at people who had Crohn's disease, those who had inflammatory bowel disease, and in healthy people as well. And so in the study, they wanted to look at diet and the gut microbiome, and if they could induce intestinal inflammation from foods that we eat, but also it looked at foods that create more of an anti-inflammatory state as well. And what we already know about the diet of majority of Americans, the westernized diet, is that it contributes to low-grade inflammation, which is an underlying cause for a lot of disease states in the U.S. And so low-grade inflammation is something that you're not necessarily going to feel or see until it's actually increased enough inflammation in the body where it's created a disease process or signs and symptoms of that disease. And so low-grade inflammation is not necessarily like somebody who has prominent inflammation, like if they hurt themselves and you can see that inflammation like on a knee or a joint or something like that. Low-grade inflammation is really, it starts and it builds up over time. And you don't, like I said, you don't see the effects of it until, you know, there's maybe some type of diagnosis or there is a elevated uh, blood level um, of some sort. That's what we already know about the current American diet. And so this kind of takes a look at the foods that are eaten and what they had found is that those that are processed and those that are animal-based diets have higher levels of bacteria that contribute to more of an inflammatory process in the body. And the consumption of nuts, seeds, oily fishes, fruits, vegetables, were linked to a higher abundance of short chain fatty acid producers, which are actually what you want in your intestinal tract because they help to create more of an anti-inflammatory environment and help to protect the intestinal tract. And if you remember from a previous video, these short chain fatty acids are also beneficial for helping with weight loss and they can even help with regulation of your blood sugar. And so one thing to note in the study is that it talked about overall alcohol consumption was linked to more of a pro-inflammatory state, but they did take a note and look at moderate red wine intake. Red wine, not necessarily like white or pink wine like the Zinfandels, but red wine, moderate intake, was actually shown to create more of a diversity bacterial culture, which is definitely needed for a healthy digestive system. And that may also even further help with the short chain fatty acid producers too. So in this study, they were able to show that habitual dietary patterns, you know, what we're eating on a daily basis, can have an impact on our gut ecosystem and it can have more, create more inflammation in the body. In this study, they were talking about those who had Crohn's disease, those who had ulcerative colitis, those who had irritable bowel, and even in healthy individuals, their control panel. What's also a good note to take away is that those who already have inflammatory bowel disease or irritable bowel disease, or those who even have, who are obese or have cancer or heart disease or other kind of issues with inflammation, they also have a decrease in bacteria as well as their anti-inflammatory functions. So if you're wanting to decrease inflammation in the body, or if you already have Crohn's disease, or if you already have ulcerative colitis, irritable bowel syndrome, or some other type of inflammatory disease, then eating more whole plant-based foods, nuts, seeds, beans, legumes, eating more 
plant-based proteins over animal-based proteins and even like i said before fatty fishes because of the increase in omega-3s which are very anti-inflammatory which are also beneficial to the gut microbiome and so it's interesting how you can create more of an anti-inflammatory state in your body helping to decrease inflammation that's already there through what we're eating on a daily basis over the long term because it affects our gut our digestive system and so the opposite is true is that you don't want to be eating a high fat, high animal based type diet, high in sugar, high in processed type foods, if you're trying to create more of an anti-inflammatory state within your body, as well as helping your digestive system, helping your gut microbiome create more of an anti-inflammatory environment within the digestive tract, which actually has effects on the rest of our body. So I hope this gives you a little bit more insight into anti-inflammatory eating. I do have other videos on my channel if you'd like to check out and wanting to know more about anti-inflammatory foods. I also have more information on my website at dietitianangela.com. I have a meal plan on there for anti-inflammatory diet. And so if you have any further questions, feel free to comment below. Give this a thumbs up if you like this video. It actually helps to support the channel to let others know about it. Please subscribe if you haven't. All right. I hope you guys have a happy, healthy day. Bye.